A judicial inquiry into the death of Eric Garner began today. Gardner was a black man killed by police while struggling to breathe as they put him in a chokehold. The inquiry is looking to gain more insight into the incident. In July 2014, two NYPD officers suspected Garner of selling untaxed loose cigarettes. They tried to arrest him, and that's when Officer Daniel Pantaleo used a chokehold on Garner, a move that was banned by the NYPD since the 1990s. Garner could be heard crying out, I can't breathe, a total of 11 times. The officers left him on the sidewalk lifeless before an ambulance finally took him to the hospital. Garner's family settled with the city for $5.9 million. Witnesses have been ordered to testify at the inquiry, one of whom will be former Special Operations Lieutenant Christopher Bannon. He wrote in a text back in 2014, quote, not a big deal that Garner died. Joining me now is one of the original petitioners for judicial inquiry and a member of the Malcolm X grassroots uh, movement, Monifa Bandele. Thank you for coming on the show, Monifa. Thanks for having me. Now, you were a part of a group that filed this petition on behalf of the Garner family back in 2019. And since then, uh, city officials tried to dismiss the efforts. Um, why was this judicial inquiry into the police-involved death of Eric Garner so important? Well, first, we wanted to have transparency. You know, even the way this story is told now over and over again about Eric Garner selling cigarettes, uh, you know, basically being arrested for a felony. He would have had to have been selling 10,000 cigarettes in order to meet the threshold for the arrest that the police officers on the scene charged him with once he was already dead. So we realized that when we look at the police records, when you look at the video, when you talk to actual eyewitnesses, so many lies have been told about what happened that day, what happened after that, what even was the pretext for Eric being stopped. So many lies have been told that we still don't really know what happened. So one of the main reasons for this judicial inquiry is to get some transparency. And then the second reason is accountability. I mean, everyone knows that only one police officer lost his job, that's Daniel Pantaleo, for killing Eric Garner. But there were a dozen police officers on the scene, and many of them had misconduct that day and the days after. So this is really to get to the root of who else needs to be disciplined and who else needs to be fired. Now, there are more than a dozen people expected to testify, but New York Mayor uh, Bill de Blasio isn't one of them. Here's what he said about the inquiry, quote, this has been looked at exhaustively and I feel horrible for the Garner family. What happened was wrong, but we do need to move on. Your response. That is so hurtful and really re-traumatizing to the Garner family. You know, the lead petitioner in this judicial inquiry is Gwen Carr, the mother of Eric Garner. And she has been fighting day and night. And Mary de Blasio has had his entire mayoral term. He has re he's been there for eight years, and he still has not been able to sufficiently investigate and discipline the officers responsible mm -hmm. for killing Eric Garner, even though he promised to do so right after winning uh, the mayoral mm -hmm. election. So this is re-traumatizing, you know, she's had enough. She knows she has to fight for everything. Even for Daniel Pantaleo to be disciplined and fired took five years. Now, what questions do you hope get answered during this two to three week uh, hearing? One, we wanna know why Eric Garner was stopped. We also want to know which police officers were investigated for their misconduct. We see now that we have access to the police records that there were so many lies told. Uh, one, one big thing that many people don't know is that the Lieutenant Christopher Bannon, who was on the scene, instructed officers to arrest Eric Garner even after they all knew that he was dead. This is the same Lieutenant who did the infamous text that you mentioned, that his him being deceased was not a big deal. Um, we also know, again, that Officer D'Amico filed charges against Eric Garner that were false. There's no 10,000 cigarettes, there's no 400 pounds of tobacco, which is the threshold to meet the reasons that he put on his arrest record for Eric Garner. So we really want to get to the bottom of this. Um, we're hoping that if we can have a public record of all of the misconduct, then we can take the next step forward to get some real accountability in this case. And to show how the city and Mayor de Blasio and the commissioner 
helped to cover up the fact that there were more than one police officers that killed Eric Garner. Well, do you think, you mentioned a couple of people, Lieutenant Christopher Bannon being one of them, do you think that he could provide the most insight into what happened, and if not, who? I really think it's the collection of all the witnesses together. You know, it's the case of when there's like fires everywhere. There were so many different places where people did things to assist in the cover-up, right? So there's false, uh, there's false falsifying of an arrest, false arrest uh, record, right? There is making false claims on the police report, right? There's pretending that Eric Garner was alive when he was deceased. I mean, there were so many things. And then you have the city who then block the disciplinary process for all of the other officers in place. So we really need the whole story together. There's not really one big piece of testimony, but we did, we did want to have we did want to have Mayor de Blasio on the stand, and that was blocked. The judge did not agree with having him on the stand because he stated very clearly this was one of the biggest cases of police brutality in the world at the time. And he said that the buck stopped with him, that he would make sure that there was accountability. And here we are seven years later, and he didn't do that. So we also want to show that he is really negligent in his duty as mayor and is ultimately the head of the police department to discipline these officers and to protect New Yorkers. And now, of all the people called to testify at this inquiry, um, a judge ruled that Daniel Pantaleo, the officer who placed Garner in a chokehold, will not have to participate in this inquiry. Um, did he state what he or she state why and should he be uh, forced to testify? The judge, um, the judge is a woman. Uh, uh, there were many. I'm trying to remember exactly why Pantaleo was not was not testifying. I mean, really, we want Pantaleo did have a disciplinary hearing. So there is record of him testifying. Those it's a closed proceeding for these other police officers. We really wanted there to be a public public record of what they did and didn't do and what discipline, if any, they faced uh, subsequent to their misconduct, because we know, kind of, people kind of know what Pantaleo has done. This is about making sure that he doesn't stand alone in the killing of Eric Garner. Now, Monifa, it took five years for then-Officer Daniel Pantaleo to be fired, but a grand jury decided not to indict him. Federal prosecutors also chose not to pursue civil rights charges. Um, but some could argue that we're in a whole new era where cops like Derek Chauvin are being convicted and held accountable. Uh, do you agree? We are in a new era, era, but it's because of women like Gwen Carr. It's because of the families and the organizations that will not give up on these cases that cities are being forced to have some level of accountability, some level of transparency, and we're starting to move towards having a greater access of the public to what's going on. You also have a more enlightened public. You know, back in the summer of 2020, 25 million people took to the streets in every state in the nation on this issue, on police violence, on state-sanctioned state, state murder of our families, you know, of our, our moms and dads and children. And so there is no way in the world that we would not begin to shift what we're seeing happening in the court. So we are we are optimistic. We know we can do hard things. This is why we took to the streets on Juneteenth uh, a year ago, and we will continue to push. When Mayor de Blasio says people need to just move on, that's exactly what he's hoping we would do. That's exactly what he's hoping that the families of people who have lost their lives to the NYPD would do, but that's not what we're ever going to do. We won't stop until these types of things end. Okay, Monifa Bandele, thank you so very much for your time tonight. Appreciate you.